good morning how is everybody doing if you're finding me for the first time my name is penny i come here a couple days a week my goal is to inspire you uh, i hope that you can listen and learn from my personal space um, and if you've not liked my page please do that and kindly share this video and also go to YouTube, like my YouTube channel and subscribe or rather subscribe to my YouTube channel so we can talk to as many people as we can. So as you can see, I'm clearing my vision. I need to clear my vision to know where I'm going. It's been almost 14 days I didn't come here because I was not doing okay emotionally, uh, financially. I was just not doing fine, but I'm getting there. I'm back um, to where we were. We were doing this book, which we stopped prematurely because I got sick. Then I had an accident. Then I was stressed. Then I had anxiety. Everything was happening. So I didn't feel like talking. So I chose to keep it real. And I'm back. And we are going to continue. You know, if you missed some of the uh, discussions we had about this book, please go back because we chose in the month of july to do uh, uh to evaluate our money to know where we are financially and uh now we are we have two more uh, a few more chapters uh to finish and the new uh, more chapters we have is um getting married which we are going to talk about today buying a house in that order having children in that order being debt free in that order and then eventually we are going to get divorced after you do all that you'll get divorced you need to be prepared because it's part of managing your money okay and then after getting divorced severe you in canada girl i think you should bring me a t-shirt since i caught you bring me a t-shirt from canada from me and my husband i can cash up you no 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 i don't need to cash up you paparapema can pay <laughs> paparapema bring me a t-shirt from um from canada like what you and your your wife are wearing i love it you guys are doing amazing and you guys cheer us a lot so my size is uh an extra large no no no. my size is a medium speed i'm talking to you right now i got off topic and my husband is paparapema size okay so after getting divorced we are also talking about retirement that's what happens when you see people that you know and you love okay you just get sidetracked so uh, in that order and then we are going to finish uh, this book so now we are going ah you post after I thought you are there ah, next time anyway now this chapter they are talking about getting married okay which is a big big challenge to a lot of us a lot of us get in marriage without thinking what marriage is about so let's see what this guy says. Yeah, next time, I, in fact, I need to go to Canada. Uh, this guy, is to, the, the writer, is talking about getting married, okay? And when you're getting married, you're budgeting for two. Get your pen and paper. Let's uh, write these things down. You're budgeting for two. And when you're budgeting for two, it's not just you. It's you and your spouse. So if you can take a pen and paper, write the things that you should consider before getting married. Let's start with religion. Some of you who are Christians or whatever religion you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, some of you take so much money to your church. You donate. So you have to talk about, you know, your religion. And then actually the first thing you're supposed to write is what you're expecting out of a marriage. What are you getting into a marriage to do? What are your expectations? Okay. Number one is religion for me, or rather for a lot of us. Number two is uh, the children. Uh, you know, how many children do you want to have? Do you want to have children? Now it is a, a discussion. Outstanding debt. When you're marrying someone, if you're marrying later, like in, in your 50s, in your 30s, some of you have accumulated debt from college or from loans you took. Find out how much debt this person you're marrying has before you marry them, because that's going to affect you. The other thing is what are, they say prenups are for rich people, but you know, even us, we are rich people. If you married your husband or your wife when she had something or he had something, don't try to take what they had. So you need to come into terms and agree that whatever you had before does not belong to your wife, does not belong to your husband. 
People have a habit of divorcing and wanting to claim what was not theirs, okay? Communication. What is the be best way you want to communicate? Some of us, you know, like to text. Some of us like to talk. Some of us like to, you know, uh, you know, face to face. Like there's different ways of communication. You need to find out your ways of communication. And while you are in there, in the ways of communication, you need to find out your love language. I'm always so proud and honored to even tell, to tell whoever I can tell. I've been married to a man for 29 years now. My husband has never called me a name. I've never called him a name. But we have like bitter, uh, not bitter, like deep. When I say bitter, meaning I'm mad. It's usually me. I'm very mad because, you know, he did something I didn't like. And sometimes it's petty things, but I make them big. And then I get so mad. When I'm mad, like, and it's big because, you know, Sometimes it's like things that are really serious to me, but maybe they are little to him. I'm very mindful not to call him names, and he has never called me names. And guess what? Look at me. Would I not annoy you? And I'm sure I've annoyed him because, you know, uh, one of my greatest weaknesses is temper. I get upset so easily. And you know, I get upset so easily when somebody is doing something like really, I'm those people who are looking at you like, what do you expect? So I, I have like, a, my temperament is not very good. But guess what? When I snap, he's always very calm. So I, I'm grateful that I got a man like that. And we find, uh, we found a way to learn each other's ways and, and, and found a way to do the conflict resolution, which is another thing, the next uh, point you need to write. Conflict resolution, how are you uh, solving your conflicts when you are in conflict, yeah? Not cursing each other and then now the next time you, you don't even know you're looking at him like a dog eat egg. If you follow Papa Rapema and Mama Rapema on Facebook, this is the lady here, Sibia Guto, there's a skit that, you know, they did. And I think Mama Rapema was the one who was on the wrong. And now she was trying to to say sorry, but she doesn't want to just come out and say sorry. And you know, kind of that's me because my sorry doesn't just come. My husband's sorry, they're just in the, they're on standby. But sometimes I don't think he means that. He knows that's what women want to hear and then the story is over. Because once he says, I'm sorry, Sri, it's over. Women, most women don't know how to apologize because most women don't like to even take responsibility when they do bad things to their husbands or their boyfriends. It's rare to find a woman who's really willing you have, you know, to take responsibility. You have to create self-awareness to know that you're wronging your spouse. So in that, when you're doing that resolution, find, you know, a way to, to keep it respectful, you know. <laughs> I know you see you you are like me. We village girls we don't talk at yeah hey, I'm sorry, no. We do things and, and then they, they know. You know, even sometimes I will smile. I can even like give him like just a smile and you know I know I did something. But it's rare for most women to come out and say, you know what, I'm really sorry. Once in a while I do and again every time I've apologized to my husband it's because I got mad so quickly and just not, uh, my reaction wasn't good. But we maintained that respect. So write that down. Respect, okay? Money. When it comes to money, some of us, we are so blessed. I am blessed. I came from a home where my father taught us how to manage money. So if you're marrying someone who was never taught how to manage money, then now you need to sit together and, 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 and start talking about money. Money needs to be managed. Now, my husband's background, their father did not sit with them to manage money the way my father did. My father used to make us write a list. You separate. Remember, we did the wants and the needs, and he will cross out. He went through the list, and then he will tell you this one you don't need. He used to downsize the list. My husband wasn't raised that way. And then two, when I got into marriage, besides the knowledge I had, I took a class. And if you've not taken a class, a money class, I recommend that you do that. I took a money class and I sat in a class that was being offered in my church, um, uh, First Baptist of Lincoln Gardens in Somerset, New Jersey. And I always thank the pastor up to today because I see him online. That pastor, as much as my father had given me those lessons, that pastor, what he did to us, he helped us understand how you build your credit, how you pay your car or, you know, cash, how you, how you manage your money, what uh, percentage to save. I even uh, bought a book. The writer 
the teacher that he brought to our church, his name was Ron Hill. Go find that guy online, Ron Hill, and go to um, Amazon and buy his book. A very good book. That book changed my whole life. Let me tell you. If you know me or if you know our family personally, we've managed to really do so much with four children with little money. We don't have a lot of money, but we've managed to do a lot. But it's because... I am able to sit down and, you know, my husband has trusted me to sit down and allocate the money in every place it needs to go. And I, 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 I do the accountability to the penny and we do it with the children. As my children are getting older, they are learning that, you know what, you take this money, you put it here because I took that class and at the same time I got the lessons from my father. Now, after you talk about money and how to manage the money, you also need to talk about career goals. We have this thing that is like, uh, is, is driven everybody crazy that, oh, when uh, women are brought from Africa, they come to America and they become BSNs and they become nurse practitioners and they become doctors and engineers and they abandon their husbands. And maybe their husband was uh, maybe doing truck driving, which still has money or was working in the group home, which he has little money. So when these women start making more money, the man's self-esteem starts getting affected. And that's why, ladies, I tell you, don't try to marry someone that you're making less money than them. And then now you want them to increase the money. If you're trying to marry someone who you know, they don't even have potential. Americans actually marry potential from college right if you marry potential that means you've talked about career goals don't expect someone to go and become an engineer when you know he barely finished high school and when you're loving someone is physical but you need to get to those serious things to talk about your career goals are you going to go back to school are you going to do a business what are you going to be doing in terms of bringing money in so Someone like me who was always a lot, okay, I came into the relationship all settled. I had my own place. I just made it clear to my husband that I come from a village. I come from a family that we didn't lack. And I come from a family where we were taught we, we have to have money. And on top of that, I had a father that provided for his four wives and his 21 children. So I was clear. I said, dude, I mean, he was working part time. I said, listen, I like money. I'm driven by money and money is a libido booster for me. You know, like really after my husband used to bring like those bonus checks, my God, my whole body would just, you know, just, I just feel good when the money is there. I don't know. I don't know about other women, but for me, money just makes me very happy because then I have options for me. I have options for my children. I have options for my, my mom. Money can help you, you know, make life easy. Sibia is saying love is all different from the material and things will not change anything in your relationship. Yes. So love and, and bills, all those things you have to, to uh, like, talk about them. So uh, for me, besides his money, I wanted to have my own money, which I, 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 I had. And for me, I, in fact, the life I was looking for, I'm telling you, is what I was getting him. I, I said, you know, uh, yeah, I can love you, but I, I like vacations, two, three vacations a year. I can give myself those vacations, but I wanted someone we can be able to do these vacations together. I wanted my children to go to Kenya. This is even before I had children. I wanted to take my children to Nyandochewere village and take them and, and show them where I came from. So I gave him heads up that, you know what, I really need someone who, who really has money or rather who's making money. I'm not saying you have it now, but with time, he sure pushed himself. You know, he went to school and he got a good job. And my husband has been a provider. But when I met him, we, you know, we had nothing really. And I had nothing, but I had, you know, a little something. He had a little something. But over the years, we've been able to do a lot of things. Again, it's because I took that money class. The other thing is the chores. You need to agree who's going to do chores, who's going to do what. In the beginning, before we had children, I did most of the chores. Like, you know, there, there's no chores anyway. I, I clean the bathroom the way I want. Women, most women will do whatever we want. It's easier. But when the children started coming, it was very hard now for me to work and do the chores. I'm speaking for me. Remember, I had given him heads up that, you know, when the children come, it might not be very possible for me to work. And that's what exactly happened. As soon as I was pregnant, hey, 
who's penny i was throwing up i was i was putting up like the whole nine years show because now i was sick i didn't know pregnancy was going to be that tough but we had waited once i started putting that uh, pregnancy uh, show like skit or whatever it was throwing up i had morning sickness for nine months i stopped working at three months so he was forced my husband act actually at that time was forced to work two jobs for that time i was home with the, with my son with the you know with the pregnancy my job was to just guard brandon to make sure brandon is going to be delivered safely and these are all things that you know you talk about it's not like i'm I'm telling you something I can even tell you again tomorrow because these are all things that are calculated, but they are there in the book, okay? And, and now you decide who's going to do what. And then the other thing is the family. I'm a big person of family, is a big person of family. If you're coming from a family that you need to help, you need to know what is this family like? What is your family like? Some of you come from families that are so demanding financially, that, that are so demanding emotionally, that are so demanding. I don't even, they, some families you marry into them, you're lost. Be careful before you sign up that paper and say that you want to be with Sevilla, you want to be my year family. Listen, do the, the background check. If you know the Ongwenyi family, you have to be a very strong family to marry into the Ongwenyi family. So talk about that. And love, that's the next one. What is love? The definition of love varies from person to person. So you need to know what love is before you go into that marriage. The other thing is sex, right? People quickly have sex and have children. And they're not even talk, thinking... What are the consequences of sex? You need to find out. They are sex addicts. You need to find out. There are people who want sex once or twice a week. You know, some of you don't take this sex thing seriously. You need to find out how often. Look, look, look at your spouse in the eye. How often do you want sex? Because your spouse's body is their, their body. You're, you don't know how they are feeling. If, they are, if they are, their libido is like up, up, way up there, don't get mad when every time you come to bed, you turn around and you are being asked for sex. You're like, we had it yesterday. Talk about sex. How often do you want to have sex? Sex gives you children. People quickly forget that they had sex to have children. Do not remove sex because this is part of why people get divorced. They are not even having enough sex. Ask yourself, why are you getting married? This person you're marrying, what do you enjoy doing with them? What is so nice that you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody like that? What is the definition of love for you? Okay? And you know there's more points here they have. And they are talking about people who get into marriages without thinking. Severe. <laughs> And you know now some people, once you tell them you had it yesterday and you can't have it today, since they married you, they are like, it doesn't matter whether it's a man or a woman. They are like, you are rationing me. You understand? Talk about the, the account. Are you going to have a, a, a joint account? Are you going to have a single account? Some of us went into the marriage straight up knowing it's joint account. That's what we know. If you try joint account and your spouse is not doing it right, you need to separate accounts. Don't sit in that zone where somebody is going. Some of the people like shopping, like shoes. Some are addicted to drinking. So if you see your spouse is overspending, go there and, you know, make an, an amendment. But don't hide. Tell them that, you know what, we are not able to do this. Sibia, you are laughing. Let me tell you. Some of the men, not so much women, you deny them sex two days. The third day, the fourth day, they are not paying mortgage. <laughs> you deny them sex, I don't know what. They are. Some men are just something else with the sex thing. Yeah, now I know there are women who are denied sex or they want sex and their spouses are tired. But it's not as common as, uh, as, as men. So talk about those things. And if you had debt, come out clean. So now the next discussion we are going to talk about is buying a home. Okay? You have to now be intentional. And let me tell you guys, if you're young and you have children, I mean, you don't have children, get this book and read. If you're following this sequence, as I've highlighted all these things in this book, you will not have a problem. Now they're talking about buying a home. And when you buy a home, the next thing is to have children. 
Some of you just got pregnant before even you knew the person. Some of you just got pregnant before you even knew if you want to spend the rest of your life with this person. You need to just figure out this person. Don't just have children. Children are not easy. You have to be so committed. Think about it. Before you have a child, think about it. You need to discuss how many children you're having. I wanted four children, and this is from journaling, because I've been writing my story for the longest. I wanted four children. My husband wanted two children. When I asked him, he said two. But then I was like, oh, this city boy, you know city boys. I'm like, hey, this boy, city boy is not going to shortchange me my two other children. So my two extra kids, I wanted them because, hey, me, I'm from Nyando Chebere. My mom had eight kids, and you know I can afford my kids. I'm like, four is a good number point of discussion there is none of my children i just got up and i was pregnant i'm even scared of getting pregnant i was afraid to have children not even him me because and what i was afraid of is the facts i wasn't afraid for nothing morning sickness all these pregnancies for nine months pushing the baby out pain breastfeeding pain raising them diaper everything pain then now you raise them until they go to college. Now in college, pain because you have to pay tuition and they are adults. What I was afraid of is true. It's not a joke to have children. So as you're getting into the marriage, now people are saying, are choosing not to have children and we want to respect that. My one son that is telling me children are a problem, when he talks to me about children, he makes sense. He's thinking the way I used to, ha to think, but my generation, it's like we had to have kids. But now he's saying, what if you have a child who's always being arrested? What are you going to do? What if you have a child who doesn't want school? What if you have a child who's this and that? Before you make those children, think about it. It's a big challenge. We are going to come to that chapter where they are telling you having kids is not just a, 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 like A, B, C, D. Sex takes seconds. But a child is a lifetime commitment with a person you might not even like. But once you have a child with someone, that's why they are telling you it's a lifetime commitment. You're going to be in their baby shower. You're going to be in their weddings. You're going to be in everything these children are going through. You have to see this man your whole life. You have to see this woman your whole life before you commit yourself. Think about it. So we'll stop there. Because I only wanted to give you guys 15 minutes, but I've given you 20 minutes. Thanks for watching. And thanks for all of you who've reached out to me. I appreciate your support. And I want you guys to know that we all go through things. When you're going through things, accept. Don't pretend that everything is okay. Everything cannot always be okay. I came here the last day was uh, July 27th. Since July 27th up to today, my life has been full of rubbish. I've gone like through so much and I'm trying to find my way. So finally, emotionally today, I felt like I'm finding my way. So try to find your way. Don't just get beat up and think you're the only one who's suffering. We are all going through something. Every dog has its day. My goal is to inspire you. I hope you listened and learned something that is going to help you to live a life with purpose. There is nobody who has it easy. A coach needs a coach. A leader needs someone to lead them. And unless you've flown first class, don't sit and tell people flying first class is nothing. After all, we are going to the same destination. The same destination is when you're going to rest in peace. Yes, we will all rest in peace. But before you rest in peace, I come here to tell you that you know what? You can make better choices and you can make better decisions so you can enjoy your journey before we all go six feet under. Because money or financial freedom gives you options, including your health is your wealth. Cheers and God bless you. Please share this video. Thank you so much.